Hey guys, welcome to the hunt. Today we are at MCBD, a haven for reptiles. This place was founded by Rom and Zai Whitaker early in 1976. This place was established mainly to conserve local indigenous species like the mugger, the saltwater crocodile and the rarest of these species, the garyal. This establishment was started to mainly procure breeding populations of these crocodiles and in the late 19th century these populations had drastically reduced because they were being hunted down for their skins to make accessories. As the need for conservation increased, Madras Crocodile Bank also started bringing other reptiles like turtles, lizards and snakes. The need for Kilonian conservation has increased exponentially and Croc Bank successfully breeds some of the threatened species. It even breeds to critically endangered species. So the order Kilonia consists of turtles and tortoises. Their characteristic feature is the fact that they don't have teeth but have a bony plate instead and they have a hard outer shell. The shell consists of bony plates which are fused to the vertebrae and the ribs. Even though the tortoise can retract its head and limbs into its shell, it can't really escape from its shell. So it would be extremely excruciatingly painful for the turtle or the tortoise to be removed from its shell because you're basically ripping its body apart. So now that we saw what MCBD does with Kilonians, let's go find out what the actual difference is between a tortoise and a turtle from one of the people who are working here. So this is Arul and he's going to tell us the differences between a turtle and a tortoise. So as you can see, turtles have a much flatter shell whereas tortoises have a much more dome-like shell and uh, turtles uh, have certain adaptations to swim around in the water. So these guys have webbing in between their fingers, webbed feet in general, just like ducks so that they can swim better. This uh, is an Indian black turtle. It's one of the more common species which we find in India. Indian black turtles are found in all the temple ponds and every lake, river, dam you can find these guys because uh, these guys are very good cleaners and they are very hardy animals. They do spend a lot of time in water and on land as, as well. Uh, these guys are scavengers in general. They are going to eat lots of uh, dead fishes and diseased fishes which swim around in the water and that makes up most of their diet and they do consume some amount of aquatic vegetation and mosquito larvae as well so that's why these guys are very good cleaners and even to clean the ganges now they have released a few thousand of these turtles there so that they can clean it out naturally this is the indian star tortoise and you can see his feet are slightly different uh, his are much more stumpier and much more like elephant legs with these spikes all over the top and tortoises shells are much more dome like and they are much more terrestrial in nature these are some of the differences between turtles and tortoises. So if you confuse a tortoise for a turtle and put it in deep water, it's going to drown. And if you're going to keep a turtle thinking that it's a tortoise on land for way too long, it's going to die because it needs some amount of water to cool itself down. So today we are with Nikhil Vijayka, who is a curator here at MCPT. And um, he's going to tell us a little bit more on research work that can be done here on Kilonians. Yes, so most of the research work in the, in the beginning, in the 70s, was focused on uh, looking at, well, uh, the trade at that point, which is significantly high, and uh, was putting um, among sea turtles, also the uh, 32 species of uh, freshwater turtles from India and Great Jeopardy. The amounts being traded and uh, sold for consumption and um, various medicinal purposes was incredibly high. That's what instigated um, a captive breeding uh, program for a couple of species. First of all, we started with um, what we have behind me here is our uh, traveling tortoise pen. They're endemic to uh, southwest India, and uh, they've been breeding pretty regularly since uh, the 1990s. So in the future, what we'd like to do is be able to uh, repatriate these animals, so to speak, back to uh, parts of their natural range, and um, have some have somebody uh, monitoring uh, their progress, where they what they're doing, where they're going, what's their uh, survival rate like, um, how are they adapting to their, the wild wild climbs as compared to uh, 
being in captivity. And another notable success is uh, further on in um, 2004, we were the first uh, zoo in the world to uh, breed the red crowned roof turtle. These uh, have been breeding pretty regularly since then. And so far, 26 of these uh, yearlings, uh, year old uh, turtles, have been sent back to Uttar Pradesh for reintroduction into the uh, suitable areas on the Chambal River. Our real landmark breeding, I'd say, in, uh, with, with regards to turtles and tortoises, would be the uh, breeding of the uh, river terrapin, Patagur Basca. Previously thought to be a very widely distributed species from the Indian and Bangladesh and the ones to uh, Malaysia, and Cambodia, and uh, thereabouts. Genetic work actually has recently found that the Indian and Bangladesh populations are distinct from the rest of the world, which makes them even more endangered now because there's very low numbers of these animals in the wild left. We've had two female uh, river terrapins since the late uh, 1980s and have been looking for a male from different places and, that, and it just came it came to us as a big surprise when um, Zoo Vienna in Austria offered us on long-term breeding loan um, a male from them in 2014 so this is very exciting after a couple of months we paired him with the two females and we saw a lot of uh, activity which was uh, uh, conducive to the probability of them laying laying eggs a lot of interactions between different animals sadly 2014 did not result in uh, any eggs as did in 2015 but this year 2016 April we had our first clutch of uh, eggs up and we've got six babies which are growing at a pretty fast rate now and adapting very well to a local diet here of um, freshwater shrimp, crustaceans and so on. A couple of the main things that make MCBD a good place to um, do research within the area is that a lot of the enclosures for our Chelonians in particular are, are quite naturalistic. So behavior that would take you maybe five years or more to see in the wild, you, you can observe here on a regular basis. So animals are basically going about their regular daily movements as, as they would be doing in the wild. So that is, gives us a great opportunity to look at everything from competition between males for females, um, breeding biology, growth rates, which, which would just be really, really hard to do in a wild situation. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. We're so sorry for the delay and we promise to make videos more regularly. To see the last video we made with MCBD, click here. To see our previous video, click here. You can also find us on Facebook. Also do check out our Instagram page. We'd also like to wish you a happy World Wildlife Day. Bye! See you soon!